Welcome to another episode of Arthritic Bourbon Bikers. Today we wanted to talk a little bit with everybody about storage and bags. So if you're going to do cycle touring, you've got to have a way to carry some stuff. Now, the amount of stuff you want to carry, that's debatable, I'd say. Yep. Everybody's got their own opinions about how much stuff should you carry, what are the options. So what we wanted to talk today about was just a variety of containers and bags and ability to carry gear. Because yep. the flex, I mean, when we started looking into this, the options are... Limitless. Limitless. Uh, and the more you get into it, the more you figure out that they are truly limitless. So we've got a couple of bikes here today. For those who are who are watching the video, you can see a little bit of the different setups we have here. But we should explain this for those who are just listening to the audio only. And that's that we have a Salsa Fargo. And we've got just a Trek FX3. And we've got lots of different variety on here purposefully. It's not to say that this would necessarily be the loadout we would use, but we threw a bunch of gear on just to show here's a lot of different options that are available. And we've got some other things to show you and talk about as well. So let's start with kind of the old traditional historic way in which people used to bike and carry gear. And that's probably panniers. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so. So... Everybody who has maybe seen folks running down the road, a large portion of those, a very popular company in the Paneer market is Ortlib, obviously. There are others, don't get me wrong, that are good or maybe just as good, but Ortlib definitely has a reputation yeah. over the years of having really great Paneer-style bags. So let's talk a little bit about those. and. And a little bit about, I guess, questions are about, like, what do we think the advantages of the traditional paneer are over, say, bikepacking or things that are maybe a little less traditional than the paneer? So what do you think are the most important, like, advantages to the paneer? So what we've got here are the small set of Ortlis. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I'm not sure what leader that is. Yeah, I don't recall. Um, but they're... They're very utilitarian and they're waterproof. Right. Kind of a tried and true design. You know, Ortler's been at it a very long time. And so this has been something that I think has worked for a lot of people for a long time. Yeah. And this is the roll top design, is that right? It is. All right. Mm -hmm. So the advantages that I've always thought about the traditional paneer is just your ability to easily take it on and off the bike. So one of the things that we see a lot of times is that you get to your location, you know, you get them all loaded up and you get to your location, you're ready to set up camp or, or do whatever when you get there. One of the advantages that Paneers really has is that you, it's really just a simple click to take on and off and then you can unload them, mm -hmm. you know, without having to leave them sort of attached to the bike. I think that's yeah. one of the things when we talk about bike packing bags like frame bags or some of these other style is that they're kind of attached yeah. and not so easy to remove off of the off of the bike usually. Yeah. So the cool thing about Ortlib is they've got these these cool clips that basically you kind of give it a pull, right? And it just comes right off. So once this is kind of adjusted, I mean it's got these these interesting adjustments and these these sort of latches on the top that you can just pull it off and take it take off with it take just take off with it and that's also advantageous if you're doing more credit card style travel as well don't you think yeah just take them off the bike carry them inside plop them in the lobby or wherever you're going yeah so you, if you're taking the stuff, your stuff into a room it's it's much easier to grab a bag and, and take off but what do you think are the disadvantages of those well you know um they would also be easy for someone to uh, just grab them off your bike and take off. You're right. You know? <laughs> easy to, could be easier to steal if you left them laying around, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. And uh, they can um, flop around a little bit on the on the bike. They tend to make a little bit of noise. A little bit of noise. A little, little rubbing. They can rub on the frame. Any of them can, you know, yeah. but I've noticed these are a little bit, uh, a little bit noisy sometimes because you have to also kind of decide if you're doing like a, a road trip or something that's a little bit off-road. These would be a little bit more of a liability there. You, know, you could envision these actually, if you don't have this little clamp on the top 
fixed, it can fly off with not, you know, just kind of hitting a curb or something like that. Right. I think the other thing that oftentimes people do take into consideration is weight. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do, there's just more mechanism and more material to a mm -hmm. traditional paneer. I mean, on top of the latches and the, you know, hardware that's associated with it, the material itself is kind of, it's pretty yeah. heavy duty. Designed to be rig rigid and rugged, yeah. And the advantages of that certainly are that when you have rigid material, then it stands up. I mean, it's going to hold up to mm -hmm. abuse yeah. and also uh, last you a really long time. But the sacrifice for that is the the sheer weight of the item. I think. Yeah, there's a little little skeleton to the to the bag, you know. So it has some like rigidity, some yeah, some does. form it to it. Something for that. Yeah. So, so the alternative to that, when we were talking about. Um, doing this kind of stuff one of the things that i was always thinking about or trying to think a little bit about was the weight because to me the more you can save in weight maybe the easier your ride is or the longer your ride was and that's when we really started looking at another alternative which is really a pan paneer style but it is a lighter weight smaller more maybe backpack or bike packing sort of centric mm -hmm. style bag which is something like these arkel dry lights now these are these are still waterproof uh roll top just like we talked about but the thing about the, the thing about it is is that when they are emptied and we can just take some stuff out of here to sort of demonstrate this to those who might be watching but um once it's out of there really these these roll up to basically nothing um you can see the size and the weight is really really lightweight now the sacrifice, though, is, is that you might be giving up some of that durability, possibly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got um, definitely a lighter weight material, but it doesn't have that rigidity that's built into it. So it's more, it's more, uh, more like a traditional bag. And it's made out of this material that's very popular now. Um, they call it X-Pack, and there's all kinds yeah. of different names and styles of it that you can get away with. You have really a more substantial rack too to support kind of this kind of bag too. You know, you have extra crossbars and things. Right, yeah. So it's it's different depending on what your uh, style is and what your bike maybe will accommodate. And you know, these bags are built with lots of adjustable Velcro. They've got on the back side of here, there's a a, an elastic strap that's springy that hooks on the bottom of the rack to help hold the bag in place. I would say one of the advantages of this is that it is lightweight, it is portable. The other advantage is that it is relatively quiet. So mm -hmm. there's not a lot of material on here to make noise. Yeah. There's yeah. not mechanical fasteners necessarily. Yeah. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna make a bunch of noise and a bunch of, uh, um, there's not going to be a lot of movement, I guess, or there shouldn't be a lot of movement in that. It, you do have to kind of pack them. They are not, I'd say the Ortlibs are more of a square design a little bit, yeah, more blocky. like kind of cubic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these are much more like a bag. And so I'd say if you, you have items that are more rectangular or you like to pack that way, you have to think of this more like you're packing a bag instead mm -hmm. of packing a box, I guess, yeah, sort of. Because the, kind of the Ortlieb is definitely more of a, of a, a squarish design, I'd say. So, yeah. There's something about these Arkells that, that occurred to me as I was out of town this summer. You know, I had the chance to go to Hawaii, rented a couple of bikes. One of those had a rack. And I wished I had my Arkells because what I had to do is take a little, um, little drawstring backpack don't like having things on my back. Yeah. But these, you can roll up and shove them in a suitcase and you really haven't sacrificed much. They can roll up to almost nothing. So if you like to go and rent bikes, and I, I do, I've done that several times now, that would be something I'm gonna start taking my Arkells yeah. if I'm flying somewhere. They're definitely easy to pack. I mean, basically when they're empty, they roll up into you know a nice small tubular sized roll and they are easy to take along if you wanted to. I guess that would also be the same if you were traveling with your bike and you wanted to be able to easily 
if you were flying your bike out or shipping mm -hmm. it out and you wanted to show up with some bags and stuff, these are definitely portable and lightweight and easy yeah. to transport. So we've all probably seen these tail bags, but I think uh, this is an Arkel tail bag, tail rider bag. But I think these things are really a neat option for people to be able to carry stuff. Now, what I use this for a lot of times is it's it's really great to put the drone in, the, in mm -hmm. it. It's easy to stuff stuff in there, but you can also drop snacks in there. You've got all kinds of options for uh, things in the side pockets. Uh, these are not by themselves waterproof though. So you need to keep that in mind. What I did like about the uh, tail rider was that it has a built-in rain cover that you can just mm. pop out, slap over the top and it's attached in here so it doesn't get lost or, or yeah. anything like that and just stuffs up in there always available when you need it but i think these are a neat option if you have extra stuff you want to put depending upon how you have your bags laid out and stuff you're probably going to have some room on the top yeah. of the racks um, but we've got other options on your bike as well so let's talk a little bit about that so this is uh swift industries zeitgeist bag what i like about it it does move around a little bit, so you got to watch that. But what I like about it is it's X-Pack. It is waterproof. It has these daisy chain things. You can hook anything on here. I'm always putting carabiners and stuff on there. Yeah. And, you know, I, it's, it's light colored on the inside, which we've learned is kind of nice when you're trying to find something in the dark. Oh, yeah. You know, light color interior to the bag. Mm -hmm. And uh, has some like dowel rods that provide some of the structure because it's really just a sack. Right. So it's it's nice, a couple side pouches so you can compartmentalize your your items and your gear because that's one and thing that's I've done is totally forgotten. Kind of a drawstring top, right, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, a little drawstring and then a flap kind of goes. And so this X-Pack material that makes the flap that goes over the top is waterproof though, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, yeah. so this is going to be water resistant. They've got all kinds of little cinch down straps and all kinds of things and I'm assuming you could you could, you know, if you're concerned about the movement of the bag or whatever, you can strap it down more if you wanted to or whatever. Is this designed to be a tail bag like this? I think so. That's what okay. I've seen it on um, on the front of some bags. Um, like I said, it does flop a little bit. You know, you've, you, there's a little another sort of uh, leather loop you can attach it to something. But depending on the geometry of your bag or your, your bike, you know, yeah. if your seat post angles too much, it's really going to... You have to make some adjustments. Right. So, but All that's right. the fun part. That is the fun Just making part. It, making it work. Right. And as we move back, you've got um, just kind of this little utility bag underneath your seat post there. Yeah, that's just for tools and an inner tube. It's yeah. not waterproof in any way. So, so I don't, I don't know if anybody can see without. it, but there's a, this is a Topeak bag that just kind of yeah. fits under the seat. We've all seen those. They're really nice if you're if you're just taking just a couple of things, maybe you want to stuff your wallet and a few things in on your bike, you see a lot of people use these, yeah. but also I think it's uh, easy to forget how useful they are for other stuff like tools, yeah. trinkets, stuff to work on the bike. You can throw, you know, all kinds of stuff will fit in those little bags. Yeah. And that's probably not waterproof, I would guess. No, no. It's just a utility bag. You know, but if you're putting your tools in there, it's probably not a big deal if it rains and something happens or, or whatever. It gets so. more mud and gravel splashed on it, then it gets really rain because, yeah. you know, I'm sort of above it. So I sort of shield it, but you know, a lot of the splatter comes up on it. And that's kicking up off the tires the, and stuff. Yeah. That's the biggest issue there. Right. One thing that thought just occurred to me, I was going to mention, I've spoken with some friends of ours that have done a, a ton of cycling. They're very much safety minded. We're talking about the Eiferts and they, mm -hmm. they notice as if you look at the gear that we've assembled here, most of it tends to be approximately the color of the pavement. It's true. You know, because black bags, gray bags look nice. People make them that way. We have the reflective stuff, but if you're driving during the day, you look just like the pavement. So, you know, it's one thing about the uh, the Ortlibs. They tend to be in red or bright yellow with yeah. a little black. So at least it's an attention getter. It's fair to say, too, that with any of these bags, you have to take into consideration the width, too. Yeah. So if you're doing single track, this might not be the solution for you with trees and branches and things where it might hit the bags as you're riding along. If you're on a trail where you're doing a trip long term, you always got to think about the width of the bag. But for most of the stuff we've done, that really has never been an issue. Yeah. But it says it is something you have to take into consideration. And Ortlib paneers, the traditional sense, they do kind of have, do sort of set out a little bit. 
Even these Arkells, they stick out a little bit, but I think it's probably a little more streamlined, a little bit tighter, but it's still something you have to keep in mind. So, yeah. yeah. As you move back or forward, depending on how you look on the bike, you've got things like frame bags and utility bags and top tube bags, and those are obvious things that lots of people use. The top tube bag is very popular for keeping things like quick, readily accessible, easy to get to, like a, you know, a bar if you wanna eat while you're riding, or maybe it's a place to stick your wallet or your cell phone if, you'll, if it'll fit in them. Yeah. Um, all kinds of options. Most of them, well, a lot of them are waterproof and probably should be. So if you're riding and it starts to rain, you need something that's at least gonna give you a little bit of protection to the stuff that's in there. A lot of times I keep my wallet in there, um, headphones or if I'm not wearing them at the time or whatever, uh, battery pack maybe or is an option. Yeah. You don't really have one on there right now, but in the past you've used a top tube bag too. What is your kind of go-to for that kind of stuff? You know, I've, I've used a couple different ones and I've gotten to where I feel like I need more space. I'm a I'm short inseam guy, so I really don't like to have anything on there anymore. I've, I've kind of really used feed bags and a, and, a, and a small frame bag for that stuff now. Um, I just, it really has been just personally something I haven't really yeah. decided works well for me. So let's talk about frame bags. Obviously I've got this little utility bag called the gas, it's a Revelate Designs gas can. That's where I keep my tools and stuff. But those, there's all kinds of little options like these little small bags, which are actually kind of fun. Because yeah. then you can make some decisions and put them in all different kinds of places. You could probably put that back here somewhere. You can, you can fit them in the locations that maybe aren't used yeah. space. I tend to keep in here also things like my bike. I've got a, a kind of a minimalist bike lock that's in there. I've also got some um, chafe, you know, creams and things yeah. like that. Little packets I keep in there just as backup. But really, we get the frame bags then. This is a really kind of a a bit of a controversial topic a little bit mm -hmm. because everybody has their idea of what that frame space should be used for. So for, for some, the frame space is all about water bottles. That's where they want to keep uh, their water bottles. And traditionally, yeah. traditional cyclists, I'd say, um, road cyclists, that's what they use that space for a lot. It's a great place to put a couple bottle cages. Every bike manufactured almost has as mounts there also. Yeah. Two or three sets most yeah, of the time. Yeah, two to three sets of mounts to be able to put bottle cages and water bottles in there. But for the person who's doing touring, a lot of times that space is used for, for some other things. Yeah. So that's where frame bags came in. This kind of happened out of the bikepacking revolution, if you want to call it that, to be able to utilize that space so that it would stay within the width of the frame for those single track mountain bike yeah. guys who were trying to avoid things getting caught oh. on trees and branches and such. And the nice part about it is, is that if you get the right sized frame bag, you can utilize that space almost in its entirety. Yeah, yeah. Um, the downside is, is that it's not necessarily easy to get into. Mm -hmm. You usually have one zipper across the top. Some have two compartments, but Everything is just kind of stacked in there, and to get to it, you really got to work around in there to get it out, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other thing is that for some people, it's a problem with, uh, depending upon how you ride and how you're, how you're, what your style is, your legs will rub on the, some of the bags. I've heard people complain about that. I personally haven't had that issue. This is an Ortlieb frame bag, um, but... I know that some folks do complain that that is a possible problem is, you know, the bag, yeah. the bags rubbing on the inseam. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on frame bags? I have, uh, have one specific for this medium Fargo made by Salza. And I like it. I just decided that unless I'm going on a real long distance thing, I think I'm going to use that space for a lock and a, and a small, small bag right now. Um, I don't, like you say, I don't, I don't put any water bottles in there, which is funny, even though I've, I've, I've decided not to use that space for frame bag right now, but I don't put water bottles in there. I've sort of made other decisions about that, but, but I, I have used it once or twice and, and liked it, but I think for me, it's, it's, a, it's sort of a, if I'm going to be going on a long camping trip, it's what I would prefer to use it for. Yeah, it is a bit of a hassle and certainly 
um, and when you're traveling with your bike, let's say you stick your bike on the back of the car mm -hmm. and yeah. you got to take all your gear off of there. If you're going a long distance, you're probably not going to leave your bags hanging off of there, flopping in the wind yeah. as most of the time. So you got to take all this stuff off. That's definitely a hassle. A frame bag is a real pain to get time sort of it. in there and set up and tightened up and all the little Velcro straps put in. It's not easy to, yeah. to really stick that thing in there. And I mean, I'm sure maybe there are people who just leave them on, but when you're running yeah. down the road, you know, at 70 miles an hour, it puts a lot of, you know, wind. Yeah. It can put some wind stress on the bike and the bike rack and everything. Yeah. And it's just something that it makes it probably makes it a little more difficult. I'd yeah. say. Well, it's hard as you have those top two bags too. It's, it's even more complicated to get it set up. It's yep. really, you got to really kind of be committed to that setup. And, and, and for me, I would like to keep it that way for a while. Yeah. So. Yeah. As we move forward, you and I have both kind of fallen in love with feed bags. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. In some instances, multiple feed bags yeah. hung any place we can find them. And the reason, the reason I like those darn things is because they're just so flexible. Yeah. I mean, you can do water bottles, coffee, but you know, they're just will fit about anything yeah. of different heights and depths and sizes. I've had a wine bottle in one. Wine, <laughs> wine bottle <laughs> will fit in there if you need to get that, that magic wine home or that you picked up at a winery, maybe as, as an example. Yeah. You can do water bottles. You can do, um, you can do food items in them. I mean, obviously yeah. feed bag, that's, they originally were designed for people to stuff food into is what they call them, but also drinks. And they've just got all these little pockets and side pockets yeah. and just lots of places to stuff little things. I find even the side pockets, I find really good to just like after you eat a bar, you're going to get your trash. You got to have a place to stuff that yeah. wrapper. Shove right in there. So yeah. it doesn't blow in the wind. And that, mm -hmm. those little pockets are just great to be able to stuff trash. And, yep. and like if you do any drink mixes or hydration tablets or anything yeah. you can stuff them in all the little side pockets and yeah so yeah. I, what do you use yours for similar stuff or yeah i've got a water bottle a coffee mug i show a bandana in there because yeah. i really have to wipe my face off a lot I, even with a headband I, I sweat a fair amount um bars i keep uh, sometimes i'll keep a, an extra revelate strap oh yeah in there you never know when you're going to find something you can't live without and, Tie it to your bike, but I, uh, I also keep a little doggy mace, and uh, I actually have a knife for camping. I shove in there. Yeah, you know they're just really things. handy. They're I wouldn't say they're the easiest thing to attach. You got to kind of maneuver to get them strapped mm -hmm. on there, with especially with all the other gear that you tend to put on bikes in general. Yeah, but um, man, they're just super handy to slam a water slam water bottles in and food items in. Yeah. Uh, these are the Revelate design, but I know other people make them. Uh, yeah, no, other lots of people make these them. types of feed bags and i just i love the flexibility the the tops are made with a drawstring style that you can do one-handed also mm -hmm. so you can loosen these and tighten them with one hand to be able to um, put in or hold water bottles and the tops with that drawstring type then you can adjust sort of the height of them yeah. so if you've got a little short bottle you can very easily get them in there but if you've got something long it kind of extends a little bit to hold that. So, I mean, that's a nice a nice function too. Yeah. But I'm a big fan of those, always have been. I think we both really yeah. love them. Yeah. I, in fact, I, uh, I got some for my in-laws for presents. They yeah. bought a couple of bicycles. It's a great, it's a great little gift. And they're not, they're not necessarily um, low-end purchases for a bag. You know, there, there's a fair amount of, uh, of cost in it, but uh, they're, they're good. I, I would, I'll replace mine in a minute. Yeah, what do those Revelate design version cost? I think they're that? about 40, 45 bucks. Yeah, about $45. So you're not talking about, uh, it's not like just buying a bottle cage. Yeah, yeah. You can find some bottle cages for you know, 10, 15 bucks. Yeah. You know, plastic ones are really cheap. Uh, but these are you know, a, bit, a bit of a commitment. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Because not only are you buying the bag, but you've got to attach it each and every time if you put it on your car or yeah. all those kind of things. So. Yeah. That really moves us to the front of the bikes, which gives lots of options. So I bought this one. This is a little Bontrager bag that I put, um, but I don't need a giant bag. This is easy to, you know, put on, take on and off. Uh, it's not waterproof, but uh, you can even put it on top of the other one because of these daisy chains. 
So it's just got basic straps. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking about here. Yep. And this, oh yeah, it's got kind of a yeah. Put a little place map, put a map in, in here if you want to. It's a nice bag. Yeah. yeah. And what do you what do you use it for? I this is normally my go to when I'm just riding around town or taking a, a day ride or whatever. Because this bag is it's spacious. Okay. This is really a, a long distance thing. This is I don't know I this is my go to now. I just put on the most of the time. So it's a quick, and, easy mm -hmm. yeah, bag to throw on. Yeah, I put a few stuff in this pouch up here. I keep in here, this is about iPad size, as you can tell. An iPad I use for work all the time. So right. iPad, a battery, um, charger cables, different things. It's usually what I have in there. Not waterproof, though, you said. Right. If it's raining, I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to gonna move it into I'm something else. I put it in the, the back bag or something. Gotcha. So. All right, let's talk about this bag that you've got right here. Yeah, so this is... Uh, Fabio's chest. I found this on Instagram. I'm an I'm a I'm an impulsive Instagram shopper. <laughs> so I love this thing. It's, Fabio's chest. Yeah. It's a uh, very creative name. Yeah, so this this guy, uh, I think uh his Instagram uh handle is uh Ultra Romance, I think. He's he's designed this thing. And uh Swift Industries makes it. You'll see their little logo here. Okay. Um and so this thing is fantastic. I really need to uh Show you this. It, yeah. It multiple points of attachment for the for the for the handlebars. You can also put it in the back. So it's got basic Velcro, big big fat Velcro here. Yep. Is and that then, the, and then some smaller oh, ones and here? Oh, some smaller Velcro on the inside. And then there's a strap that you can stabilize it against the uh, the stem or the down tube okay. or the uh, like yep. guess, handlebar tube. Now, this thing actually, you can get a lot more space out of this thing. Okay. So it's kind of expandable. It, yeah. So, so the, and, uh, for those who are just listening, there's a flap that goes over the top that kind of snaps down to shorten, but you can unsnap to sort of expand it. So go ahead and yeah, show it. Yeah, it just it. unfolds to, to, to accommodate a much more um, spacious cavity. So uh -huh. if you look at this thing, this thing's huge. In fact, what I put in here, oh. I've, I've shoved in my Ortlib handlebar bag for <laughs> discussion later. All right, <laughs> and also in there I have a, I have a shirt and I have an iPad and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's so like a treasure chest. What's the depth of this? Would you guess maybe 16, 18 inches deep, probably? Yeah, yep. and it's more of a roll top style, right? Mm -hmm. So it just kind of yep. kind of rolls up, you roll and it then... down, snap it. This goes over the top, and then you have this flap. And the bottom of that is there some rigidity to that, or there's yeah thin plastic, um, semi-rigid sort of lining. Like a sheet almost, mm -hmm. of plastic yep. or something in the bottom of yep. that. And then, you know, inside it's, again, it's it's light colored. If you're yeah. camping after dark and you got just a little bit of light and you can you, you see your objects sort of showing up against the background. Right. So this, this is good, it has these side pockets too. Uh, I put, you know, all kinds of stuff in there, snacks, whatever you decide. Right. It's It's a nice bag, it really is. But as I said, it is, it's, you know, it's kind of, and this is not the large version. There's a larger version, in fact. Wow. And so, um, you know, you have to, this is not something I would leave on my bike going very far in the car. This comes off and it's, you know, if you have feed bags and things, it takes some engineering to put it on there. Yeah. But once it's all on there, you've got all kinds of space. It, it really is a very useful bag. These daisy chains, I put carabiners on there, hang hats and sunglass cases. Right. What's so. uh, what's the cost on something like that? Do you remember ballpark? Yeah, this was probably it was it was at least two hundred fifty dollars, maybe a little north of that. Pretty pricey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's you know, it's none well of, made. No, in fairness, none of this stuff is cheap. So it's true. Um, yeah. Like the mm -hmm. Arkells, I think a pair of the Arkells is about eighty five dollars. I think right, eighty five ninety dollars so. maybe. And the Tail Rider bag, you're talking about one hundred fifty bucks probably. You know, just to try to give people an idea of the cost. I don't know if you remember the cost of that bag, bag you have on the back. That's probably 150 I believe. Yeah, so I mean, That's all nice. of this stuff, you're going to pay anywhere between 100 to $200, depending yeah. on the setup. Frame bags vary in cost, but they're anywhere from 100 to 200 depending on size and company and who's making them. Um, and each of the small bags, you're usually looking at anywhere from from $25 to $60, I'd just say just in range, yeah. depending on what you're buying. Um, so that's a, but that's a cool alternative. Now that's a little bit more of a, uh, kind of a custom. Yeah. It wasn't custom made for you, but I'm just saying that it's a limited mm. production, I guess I should say. True. Because this yeah. guy, 
who works this stuff, he doesn't always have these available. Like you had to wait a little bit to get this, right? I did. It was, uh, it was kind of a Christmas present to myself. I ordered around uh, October, November. And yeah. I made them in batches. Might be switching that model a little bit, but that's true, the limited production. It's an interesting design though, sort of that roll top style and mm -hmm. and uh, then just sort of strapped onto the bar. It's it's neat. How do you find it is as far as movement wise? Does it stay pretty pretty steady on there? Yeah, I, you do have to adjust these straps, okay. which is probably why there are so many points of attachment uh, that you can use. Once you get things settled up, you sort of cinch it down and really kind of wiggle it in, get it where you want it, and then it's kind of set. And the but name is Fabio's Chest. Fabio's Chest because of wow. Fabio. Fabio. Yes, the yes, the model dude. Because um, he did have big pecs. <laughs> that's a Still good, does, name. I'm sure. good uh, name. I, I guess that's, maybe that's what that's from. I don't know. But uh, I, I love it. I really do. So it brings us to one more bag, or another bag that we can talk about, which is handlebar bags. So roll handlebar bags are popular. Not unlike that, really. Mm -hmm. It's the same, really similar kind of a style. This is Ortlieb's version of a handlebar bag with a, an accessory pouch on the front. That sort of hangs on to it. The difference is these are really designed to roll from the end. So you've got this same kind of material that everybody's kind of using. It's like mm -hmm. an X-Pack or some version of that, that you roll open the end and you've got the ability to slide in gear. What I happen to keep in this is tent. Um, this is where I keep the tent that I use packed up and in here has Velcro straps that go on to the handlebars. Then it has sort of these adjustable um, straps that also kind of back that up. You've got straps on the front that, that, that you know goes around the the uh, yoke of the bike, and this is like a roll top, so you kind of can put some stuff in there and roll it down. You can also take this off and still attach to the bike separate of this bag if you want. But sort of that's another. Um, thing that you can use to, to put on the handlebars for a bag to be able to carry more gear. I think the disadvantage of this is number one, weight. We didn't really mm -hmm. talk about the weight that these bags put on your handlebars, but it does change mm -hmm. the feel a little bit. Yeah. Um, having the weight up high like that, as opposed to having weight maybe down on the forks, yeah. which front, front panniers would kind of put the weight lower. Um, but this definitely kind of makes use of these handlebar space pretty well because you are making use of the full width. I think the things you gotta be careful are make sure the bag, when it's all rolled up and done, isn't wider than your handlebars, obviously. Yeah. If you can avoid that, it's good. But also I think one of the disadvantages with these handlebar bags is that they're very hard to get off there and on there. Yeah. So you can't just pop this off when you get to your camp and decide to put your tent up. You've really got to try to leave it on there, open it up and get the stuff out then mm -hmm. you've got to be able to roll it back up and get it back in the handlebar <laughs> tube, if you want to call it that, yeah, yeah. make it all fit again. Yeah. And sometimes if, a, you know how it is, I mean, we can, you can spend a lot of time packing up a tent, trying to get it rolled up tight. And, mm -hmm. You know, you can't just throw this thing in there. I think that's yeah. one of the disadvantages of these style bags is you can't just, yeah, you, you can't just slam hurry, it in there. You know? yeah, yeah, if you're in a hurry, if it's raining, and you're trying to get packed up mm -hmm. to get up back on the road, these are not necessarily what I call convenient for that, but they are um, useful still and another option to consider. Yeah. The other option, of course, that you have to talk about in the traditional sense is yeah. that guy, right? Oh yeah, the Ortlib um, handlebar bag. Uh, this I had on my other bike is, is a track similar to yours. Their anchoring mechanism is different. You, you sort of uh, affix this blocky thing to the handlebar with these these wires actually and it's very stable much more stable it looks and then this just slides down and clamps on so do you remember what that model is called is it the six oh my goodness i can't recall l maybe it's an ortley handlebar bag but it definitely has this uh, mechanism that sort of clamps around the the stem mm -hmm. handlebar where the handlebar meets the stem area yeah. And it's locking, right? Yeah. It does yeah. have a lock it locks. mechanism. So mm -hmm. this kind of snaps down into mm -hmm. that plastic. It's a plastic molded plastic lock yeah. almost that it sort of slides into. And it does have a key yeah. to lock it and kind of keep it in place. Yeah. And with this flip top. 
So the idea yeah. with the flip top is just that it goes down around the edges and if it rains or whatever, it keeps everything yeah. waterproof. And magnets in the back kind of fix it in place. Yeah. Little, little loop that you can easily grab and pop up open. Yeah. Again, this is the right size for certain things. My tablet, my little iPad for work. That's why first time I bought this. That was kind of your original intent with buying it, wasn't it? That yeah. you wanted to be able to have something you could stick your iPad in, mm -hmm. stick your phone, a few other things, and it'd be waterproof and easy. The advantage of this, not unlike Paneers, is that you can take it off. Like I know multiple times we've gone, yeah. you've been able to just grab that thing, yep. take it off, and, and walk into a restaurant and have, with me. have yeah. lunch. Or... It's like my little man purse. Yeah. We should mention that. I mean, it's not that I have this unhealthy attachment to my iPad. Maybe I do, but it's really work-related. Yeah. You know, use it for work, and I could find that I need it about any time of day. So... Really Not only that, yeah. let's, to be fair, when you're doing a lot of travel, it's nice to have the option to have a tablet device with you to mm, be yeah. able to research things. And yeah. while it might not be the most weight conscious, it is nice to have that option to be able to use it for finding places to stay, researching routes, all kinds yeah. of stuff. Fried on chicken. Top of... Who has fried chicken locally? <laughs> That's important. Fried chicken's important. <laughs> so it is a nice option to have. Nearest though. distillery. Yeah. So. What else? kind of bags have we have we missed talking about we really didn't talk about front paneers that's obviously mm -hmm. an option though is it you know to be able to put a rack on the front and hang not unlike these small ort libs yeah. you can put big ones on the back little yeah. ones on the front yeah those were originally on on the front of my other bike right and uh the only other thing we could talk about are these sort of anything cages one of the options you can do is you can get something like these salsa anything cages that kind of goes on the front forks you can have some small bags to be able to put in there. These are from Salsa. These are their anything cage bags that are made for that. Although you can use really anything. I mean, we've strapped um, Nalgene bottles to those mm -hmm. up there to carry extra water or to use for cooking. Um, one of the things you can find sometimes when you're out is that you might have plenty of water to drink, but if you're at somewhere where you can't easily get water, you might need water to cook. Yeah. And just having a bottle of water for cooking, extra water for cooking is really, really nice, yeah. which you've got this this crazy cage on the front there to, to yeah. carry the water. But then it gets muddy. Yeah, it gets dirty it's, and it's, muddy. It and sure the, gets muddy. It's on the down tube there. But these, these salsa anything bags, you can definitely get some stuff in there. Like they're not huge, but what I keep in this is my cook kit and stove. You know, here's a, yeah. uh, a big, a big, uh, fuel canister for the stove and stuff. You can get a fair amount of stuff in there. Yeah. And it is waterproof. These are made out of uh, pretty heavy material, actually. These are not just X-Pack. You can definitely get a few more things in there if you want. Food, cooking items, you can yeah. throw you know a little towel or whatever in there. Handy little bags. You know, I like that. That's basically a, a, you know, sort of a specifically made dry bag but you know i've i've made good use of a big dry bag and bungee cords on my my rear rack when Absolutely. i didn't have anything else yeah you know you can you can adapt a dry bag in many ways if you have some straps or bungee cords yeah you know. some of the first time we did stuff i had a i went to walmart bought a cheap dry bag that mm -hmm. would keep stuff dry just roll it up strap it on the back of your rack and take off there's no there's no magic to keeping your stuff dry yeah. other than you just want it to be dry. I think yeah. the advantages of some of the bags are maybe the, the flexibility about how you can strap them on, but you certainly can go and get some bungee cords and wrap that baby up yeah. And, yeah. and go for it. Yeah, so, get a hole in it, just get some duct tape. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Well, yeah. hopefully what this has done is shown everybody that there are an unlimited number of options, really, in ways in which you can carry stuff. You can go with the traditional route of panniers, and certainly that's uh, a great way to carry carry gear. I mean, you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's tried and true. Um, just know what you're buying and what the trade offs are. Part of I think part of this for us too is we just kind of enjoy the process. Like yeah. part of the hobby part of doing this is messing around with changing the bikes all the time. Mm -hmm. I, hey, I've got this new little bag. I'm going to put here and try it, and all these yeah. different things, and always just trying to find what. Like combinations work. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, the fun part, adapting it. Yeah. Move it, move it to a different part of the bike. I've done that. I've, I've had that black bag up here, 
move it around. There's lots of flexibility with the bags. I think that's maybe one of the differences is you can move them around and place them in all different kinds of places. I've even yeah. seen people take these tail rider type bags and if they've got a rack on the front that has a, a mm -hmm. top to it on the front fork, they'll put a tail bag on the front. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just to have the extra stuff to carry and there's all kinds of options. So anyway, hopefully this has helped everybody kind of know there are a lot of different options for bags, whether they're more hard sided bags a little bit, not really hard sided, but the Ortlib paneers are, are pretty rigid structure. Um, or you get some soft bags or whether you get frame bags, feed bags, handlebar bags, all kinds of yeah. bag options. Yeah, certainly a limitless possibilities. Are there any bags on the horizon for you? Uh, I, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to sit tight. I'm trying not to make any more significant purchases because <laughs> uh, I have I have made so many other changes to the bike. I think I'm just going to I'm going to have to just sit on it All right, right now. I don't think so. Okay, well, we're going to wrap it up then. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening, depending on whether you're watching this on YouTube or on the podcast. We are distributing the podcast on Anchor, um, and Anchor right now has it out on Anchor and SoundCloud. It takes seven to ten days for it to hit the Apple world of podcasts, but as time goes on, I think the distribution will get improved with our audio version. Of course, the YouTube version is going to be on the YouTube channel, and uh, hopefully you guys will follow along. If you haven't liked or subscribed or followed us on your favorite podcast platform, give that a whirl. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to try to do one of these every week. Today was about bags. We don't know what next week will be about, yeah. but, you know, yeah. maybe we'll talk about seats or something oh, crazy. Yeah. You never know. Or handlebars. Yeah. Today was out in the garage, so you probably got a little more noise. The mm -hmm. cicadas are already talking this morning. Yeah. And we uh, got to probably get to yeah. hear a little bit of that. But thanks for following along, and we'll see you next time. All right.